Praise the Lord. Welcome. Thank you for watching this morning. I'm Evangelist Dennis Phelps. I'm a humble servant for God. I uh, want you to know that today is a brand new day. Hallelujah. You're here because God willed you here. If you, if you, if you don't understand that, it's very simple. You're here because God willed you here. But first, let's pray. Thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus for this day. We th I thank you, Lord, for everyone tuning in, everyone that's watching now and everyone that will hear this and watch it later at some other time. Father, I humble myself before you in the name of Jesus. Father God, I am your instrument. Father God, please use me. Have your way. Father God, I invoke your Holy Spirit right now in the name of Jesus, Father God. Lord, that you will speak your words through my lips, Father God, and have your way be done so that God set the captives free and those that are, the souls that are lost will be brought to salvation. Father God, that even the backsliders and those who have turned from you and Father God have, have turned their backs on you, Lord, and lost all hope. Father God, that this word, Father God, will find their ways into their ears and their hearts. Father, that you'll use this to bring them back. And we thank you for it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. So like I was saying, uh, you're here because God willed you here. First off, uh, God created all of us. First, he started with Adam and Eve because he said he created them. So when he formed Adam's body from the dust of the earth, uh, he, he blew the spirits of Adam and Eve into that body. He says he created them. That's what he's talking about. Uh, aside from that, even before God created Adam and Eve, spirits, uh, then later the bodies, he knew all of the souls, spirits that human, you know, us, uh, that, that he wanted to create so that at the appointed time throughout the whole timeline from the beginning until the eventual end of, of who will be sent into this world to populate this earth. Because that's why God created Adam in the first place, was to subdue the earth. He was given responsibility to be the caretaker of the earth. It was being reconstructed. It was being repaired uh, because God put it back together. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, it says, God, in the beginning, the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. It was done. Then in verse 2, they call it the gap theory. In verse 2, it says, and the earth was formless and void. It was without form. So what happened? All of a sudden, it, w it was a cloud of dust sitting in space in suspense. And uh, before that time, there was no sun or moon because God's glory illuminated all the planets. Okay, because you see how the stars give light, right? Everything that God creates gives light. Remember that, because God is light. Praise the Lord. Uh, so then it says, he said, let there be light. He turned the light on in the darkness because this whole void that we existed around this rock that we live on is darkness. So he spoke light into the darkness. He said, turn the light on. And then God, with his hands, collected all the particles of, of dirt and dust that forms the earth and put it back together. And the Holy Spirit hovered over the waters, gathering all the particles of water that were floating around in that space, put it back together, and after the earth was reformed and shaped, and all the hills and valleys and everything were reformed by his fingers, then the Holy Spirit put the waters back on the earth, recreating the atmosphere that we have, right? The, um, the stratosphere, the ozone, all that. Anyway, uh, so then out of the dust, God shaped and formed each animal each insect, each bird, everything, all the creatures that, are, that inhabit this planet, God created them, he formed their bodies, and he blew the life into them as well. And we call them animals, reptiles, fowls, uh, you know, everything in the sea. And so then God told Adam, he gave Adam instructions that he put them in the garden of Eden, there's a place called Eden, and in Eden, there was a, uh, a part of it that's called the Garden, the Garden of Eden. And in this space, this wasn't a part of my sermon, by the way, 
but this is what the Lord wants to speak right now. <laughs> there were trees. There were trees, and there were three rivers that flowed through. And there were two trees. Two, I mean, okay, there was a, a bunch of trees, all right, but away from that area, there were two other trees. And there were three rivers that flowed through, okay? So there was a tree of knowledge of good and evil that's representative of the Father, because God was represented, all of us were represented in the garden, amen? The Father was represented as a tree of knowledge of good and evil, right, which had the forbidden fruit. He wasn't supposed to touch the fruit, wasn't supposed to eat it or, or bite it or anything. There was the tree of life, which is representative of who? Jesus Christ. And then you had the three rivers that flowed through, the Euphrates, the Tigris, and uh, there's another one. And that was representative of the Holy Spirit. That's the triune God, right? Well, we were represented in the other part that had all the trees because we read in Ephesians, I'm, I'm sorry, no, no, not Ephesians. Uh, let me see. Um, I'll think of it in a minute. Um, in the Old Testament, uh, the trees were representative of people. Like uh, there was a, a Pharaoh. Pharaoh, there was a tree that represented Pharaoh. Not only Pharaoh, but when it says Pharaoh, it talks about all the people um, at that time uh, who would be associated with Pharaoh. This particular Pharaoh, because Egypt had lots of Pharaohs, but it's talking about the one in Moses' time, the one that God sent Moses to talk to to tell him, free my people. Well, and it, and it uh, describes the uh, tree that represented him. He said it was thick, it was tall, and the branches were long, and it was strong, it was healthy, right? And, and, and so it even said that all the uh, birds, whatever, uh, nested in it, um, took comfort in, it, in its, uh, you know, shadow. Um, so in those trees, there we were. Every soul, every soul that God was um, and had created to intend to inhabit this earth, I believe that's where we were represented. Um, okay? So, and then you've heard, maybe you haven't heard of predestination. Well, uh, predestined is God's business, right? All that means is that before it was your time to be on this earth right now, because now that you're here, right, you can say that you've been destined because the term is appropriate for the present. But before you were sent here, before you were given birth, before you were birthed out of your mother's womb, before you were conceived in her womb, you were predestined because you hadn't come here yet, right? So predestination is all, it was all God's business. Um, so yeah, we're all predestined so that your soul, your spirit is sent into a woman's womb at the appointed time, the time during the whole timeline of this world uh, at the time that God appointed, at the appointed time, amen? So God willed you to be here. And if, uh, if there was anything fighting against your mother wanting to give birth to you, to bring you into this world, that's the devil working through people because he hates life. Jesus is life. He's a life giver. He's a prince of peace. He's also the prince of life. He is the authority over peace, authority over life. And uh, anyway, long story short, so, so through all this process here and now, God created us out of his love. He created everything out of his love. He is love. God, God is love. God is light, right? Let's, let's talk about the things that God is, okay? Uh, God created it all out of love. He is true. He only tells the truth, amen? He's, he's not a liar. He wouldn't create something so that he could just turn around and have it destroyed. That would be stupid. That would be insane. That would be chaos, right? And that's not God. I ain't just pointing this out to you. And um, so through the process, I'll use myself as an example. Okay, I was not supposed to be here because my biological father did not want me. He did not want any children. And after my mother got pregnant with me, he was physically abusive. He would smack her around. He would punch her in the stomach. He would uh, throw her down the steps, okay? And so, you know, the police were called several times, and then uh, they went to go see the judge, and the judge told my mother, she's got to make a decision. Either you choose this child or you choose that man. So, obviously, my mother chose me. 
And so here I am. And so I grew up, you know, without having that father, you know, and, and through all the anger that I had, uh, that, you know, it, anyone, even orphans, you know, anyone who grows up in this world without one or both parents, it's hard. It's really hard. So you have all these things against you, right? You have, because you don't know how to react. You don't know how to think about things. You're very insecure. And, and so what happens in this process is you're growing up feeling weird, being weird. You're an outsider because you don't know what it's like to be inside of a real family. So through all this, the devil uses things to, through your anger. You know, so then you start to doubt yourself and think something's wrong with me. Either I'm stupid or whatever. So you want to inflict all the pain on yourself internally because you can't appropriate it, right? You can't appropriate, you can't, you know, talk to the parents, right? Because they're not there. So you grow up through all this and then you go through a self-destructive mode. This is the devil. This is how the devil works against you. But through my childhood, uh, my mother had me sent to um, churches, you know, when I was little. And then, you know, so I was able to be in an environment where I heard about God, at least at a, at a tender age. And then later as a teenager, you know, I got into evil things. Um, and uh, even became a Satanist. And, and so the first thing that you got to do to become a Satanist or anything to do with witchcraft is you have to turn your back on God. You have to renounce God, right? So that's what I did um, initially for that. And then later, um, something went wrong. And so the devil was coming for me to take my life. And I was struggling in that moment. I, I was breaking out in a cold sweat. I said, oh my gosh, what can I do? This is the devil himself coming to take me. What can I do? So then, like in a witchcraft, you know, it's all in symbols. Everything is symbolic, right? So I'm thinking of structures like building, house, uh, church, God. I said, God, if you're real, please make this stop. And instantly, boom, everything went away. Uh, everything was at peace. God showed himself to me. I didn't call Jesus because I didn't know to call the name Jesus. But God knows exactly who you're calling out to. Amen. Can I get an amen? God knows exactly who you cry out to when you're crying out to God. Hallelujah. Not the God of this world. Not some fake God. Not some phony God. Not some fake version of Christianity. But the true God who created heaven and earth. Amen. Hallelujah. So, and then later on, my mother and I, we got an um, invitation to a non-denominational church. We believed in healing. Uh, you know, it's a non-denominational -denom church with a Pentecostal uh, preacher, you know. So they believed in the Holy Spirit, the power of God, the name of Jesus, and victory and salvation and deliverance. Amen? And so, yeah, we got saved. We gave our hearts to the Lord. And uh, praise God for that. So that's why I said, God willed you to be here. God fights for you the whole time from birth until now. God's been fighting to preserve your life for the moment. In, in uh, Jeremiah chapter uh, 1, God told Jeremiah, he said, Before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. And after you were in your mother's womb, he said, I had a purpose for you to be a prophet to the nations. You see? So when God willed you into this world, he had a purpose. He had a purpose for you. He has a purpose for you. Amen. You have purpose. Hallelujah. So anyway, let's 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 start the sermon. <laughs> That's not even the sermon yet. All right. So the title of this message is you're free to be yourself. OK. Here we go. We live in a world of high expectations. OK. Depending on the community you live in, the levels and types of expectations vary. We are the product of our environment, as you've heard echoed through educational institutions, civil rights groups, criminals, and people who feel they're at some type of disadvantage, right? We are a product of our environment, which is true. We have been conditioned on how to think, how to behave, act, speak, walk, dress, live, and how to treat other people. Many people grow up in a poor family, living in a poor community. Others grow up in low to upper middle class families, and communities. Fewer grow up in rich to wealthy families. If you put economic status aside, you'll discover 
that most cases are not ideal, right? Just because somebody grew up in that socioeconomic situation or family, it doesn't determine the success that they'll have in their life or who they are. It doesn't define who you are. Amen. Um, also, just because you live in a nice big house with a rich family and, and they're not good people, okay, uh, that could be a toxic, critical, evil, bad situation to grow up in, you see? You must understand and accept the fact that everyone is damaged goods to a certain degree. The impression you get from a person based on the exterior appearance is not who they really are on the inside. One of our strongest traits as humans is our adaptability, it is a reaction to self-preservation. Our instinct to survive enables us with a special ability to change our behaviors, our manners, speech patterns, uh, how we look and sound to mirror our perception of everyone around us. The short term for it is blending in. Uh, fitting in is the next challenge, to fit in. You know, you've heard the term to get in where you fit in. Well, this is where that comes to play. Uh, so changing things about yourself in the endeavor to be accepted by others is the biggest challenge people face. And this is from all ages, right? Uh, meanwhile, this creates an ugly challenge or war that many of us can't win, right? They call this survival of the fittest. You've heard survival of the fittest. The Darwinists love that term, survival of the fittest. Uh, this is peer pressure on steroids, right? Peer pressure but on steroids because it's not just, you know, a couple kids or a couple people. It's everybody. Uh, the pressure and stress this causes you to put on yourself is relentless. This causes you to fear. And what does God say? Fear not. Throughout all the Bible, God tells people, fear not. Jesus said, fear not. Amen. You put your hope and trust in God. You're not... You can't do it on your own. All right, so this fear is based on trying to please other people, right? People pleaser that have convinced you that they're better than you. Based on your home life and parental upbringing determines how much self-esteem or how little uh, confidence and humility you have or don't have. This puts the test to your moral compass and your best judgment. Uh, other factors that contribute or come into play are mentors, teachers, the people that you respect, religious teaching, and the people that you socialize with, right? This is all the different information, the types of information, education and all this that goes into your mind that helps you to develop and form a uh, version of your world or how you view the world um, and people. So they all leave a permanent impression on, on the real you and forever change how you view and think about yourself Think about other people, life, and the world you live in. So back to the damaged goods part. You are damaged goods. Everyone is damaged goods. Everyone. Blending in and fitting in is our way of covering up or masking the damaged parts. Blending in and fitting in, right? We're masking, right? Because you have to pretend. You've got to be somebody else. You've got to be another version of yourself that other people would deem acceptable. We are the most impressionable from the time we learn to walk to the age of eight. After the age of eight, we develop enough where we begin to have self-realization, which gives us a new perspective about how we are spoken to and treated. You begin to identify people because we are old enough, right? You begin to identify people and start understanding what they're saying and the meaning of their words to you. Uh, and after realizing there's nothing you can do to change it, your misbehaving becomes more of acting out, because you heard about that, right? Oh, he's, the, he's not being bad, he's just acting out, right? Uh, acting out is an outward expression of your pent-up anger, right? Because that anger's got to go somewhere. Uh, there's a difference between misbehaving and acting out. The difference is your reason for misbehaving. Uh, you see, evil is perpetual when it is inflicted on you. Let me say that again. Evil is perpetual when it is inflicted on you. Because once you've been hit with it, right, someone hurt your feelings, someone betrayed your trust, you want to turn around and do it to someone else. And then it keeps going and keeps going. It's a chain react. It's perpetual. Uh, another cause of damage is when people betray your trust. Like I said, when you get dumped, you know, relationship, 
girl for birthright and get dumped, lied to, cheated on, betrayed by a friend, or someone you confided in with intimate and personal information, it's a striking blow to your heart. This is not partial to any socioeconomic level that you're at. These things happen to all people from the poorest to the wealthiest. Uh, the internal fight, the internal struggle, and the internal war that you're left with through the years is with yourself. You understand that? You're left with fighting with yourself because they're no longer around, you see? But you're left with this hurt. What do you do with it, right? <clears throat> Praise you, Jesus. So as an adult, you constantly ask yourself, what should I do with this anger and the pain? What can I do to make this better? Uh, you begin to lose your, self, your sense of self as you fade into focusing on becoming someone else. After a while, you subconsciously forget who you really are. You become so immersed in your new character. You understand that? Uh, what you don't realize is you need to get free from all the negative programming. So what is programming? Because your mind is like a computer. Scientists have used this, uh, <laughs> you know, like use this term. Uh, you know, the human mind is a computer. It, it, it stores information. Um, so people spend billions of dollars every year on gurus, you know, help gurus, self-help programs, self-improvement programs like how to be a better you. All that money is wasted because none of them can tell you how you can be set free from it. They tell you things that you can do to be set free, but they don't tell you how you can be set free from it. They tell you how to treat the symptoms in the form of educating you on what and how to change. But the problem is how to, how to let go and completely become detached and permanently freed from it. Other people give billions of dollars to big pharma, pharmaceutical industry, on pills and other forms of medication to treat the problem. Um, they have medication that'll pick you up, it'll wake you up, mellow you down, put you to sleep, make you happy, keep you focused, everything, right? So other people spend millions of dollars on therapists, uh, hypnotherapy, and counselors. Other people try holistic healing using guided meditation, crystals, stones, and herbs. And there are people who invest heavily in alcohol, marijuana, and illegal drugs to numb their mind and the pain. So let me ask you, which one are you? I'm not here to judge you. I'm just here to share with you, okay? Because God has love and mercy for you, amen, and for me, for everyone. And this is how he does it. His word, through his word, we're set free. God's word is a strong medicine, amen? It's a strong medicine when you're healed, when you're doing good, right? When you're not spiritually sick, it's not, it tastes sweet. It's like you're right there with it. Thank you, Lord. Yes, God, I am healed. But when you're spiritually sick, it's a strong medicine, and it's hard to swallow. It's got a real nasty taste to it, amen? But it saves your life, amen? It will restore your heart. It will restore your soul. It will bring you back to a place where, where you are yourself and, and your heart's in a place where you feel loved. Amen? Hallelujah. That's what God's about. In Mark chapter 8, verse 36, it says, For what does it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? We're surrounded by fake people. Fake people are everywhere, everywhere from your local church, every company and organization with employees, in our government, in your own family, to everyone, to, to everywhere there's a community of people. Uh, and, you know, I think it's funny to hear uh, someone say, I can't stand fake people, right? Because many, if not most, families treat each other better. I mean, they, most families treat other people outside of family, strangers, better than they treat each other. Um, because most of the people do the same thing. The ones that are saying, I can't stand fake people, <clears throat> I witnessed this myself through the years. Um, and I've been wanting to say that, okay, but all of us are fake to someone in some way at some time. Everyone's guilty, okay? Uh, so the answer and solution you seek can only be found in one person. Jesus Christ, not through a medication, uh, not through science, not through books, not through um, 
drugs, anything. It's only through Jesus Christ. There's no guru. There's no human being on this planet who can set you free from your sin. There's no human being on this planet who can set you free, okay, from, from wickedness in your heart, from the pain, the shame, the guilt, okay? Even if you're guilty, let's say you did something really bad, right? Let's say that you, you molested someone, you sexually assaulted someone, you raped someone, you killed someone, whatever the case was, okay? Only Jesus Christ can help you. There's no self-help. There, there, there's no doctrine. There's no doctrine, no matter what organization it is, with a doctrine, right? Even the government has doctrine, you know, and they have their own ministry, the ministry of government, right? All these ministries. Um, you know, there's no anything anywhere that can help you, that can set you free, but Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, they who call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, they shall be saved. Hallelujah. And only he can set you free. Amen. We're born, we're born with an evil or carnal nature. When we're born in this world, we're incapable of changing our true nature or unlocking the ability to truly be yourself. We are a prisoner of our own mind. You understand that? We are a prisoner of our own mind. This is where the battlefield is, is in your mind. This is where the devil hits you. Everyone hits you is in your mind, right? They want to mess with your mind. They want to make you think something that's not true. They want you to doubt yourself. They want to convince you to do something bad. They're jealous of you, okay? There's all these different voices that you hear throughout your life, okay, that are bad, right? They don't like you. They, they're, for all different reasons, you look better than they do. You dress better. You smell better than they do. You speak better than they do. Uh, your job profession pays more, does well. Whatever the reason is, that's what it's about. <clears throat> so... If you listen, right, because your mind collects all the information. So then we become a prisoner of our own mind. Because even though other people, everybody else can see that you've got potential to become so much greater, so much better in your life. <clears throat> but in your own mind, you don't think so. Okay? That's the reason. Because the battlefield is in our minds. We are a prisoner of our own mind. You can't escape. You can't hide from it. You can't run from it. Wasting an entire lifetime on seeking approval from other people will never change that. Only Jesus Christ has the authority to forgive sins. Amen? In the book of John, chapter 3, verse 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever shall believe, with, believe in him will not perish, but will have everlasting life. Amen? So I'd like you to turn to John chapter 1. If you got your Bible, if you sit in front of a computer, whatever the case is, um, if you don't have a Bible or a scripture in front of you, then I'll just listen and follow along, okay? John chapter 1, okay? In the beginning, oh, remember Genesis, it said in the beginning, right? Chapter 1, verse 1. Here we are in John chapter 1, verse 1. They both start with the same phrase, in the beginning, right? So here we are in the very beginning was the word. And the word was with God, and the word was God. Hallelujah. The same was in the beginning. The same was in the beginning, the very beginning with God. And without him, it says all things, that, all things were made by him, the word. And without the word was not anything made that was made. And in him, the word was life. Hallelujah. And, life, and the life was the light of men. Wait a minute. The light of men. In the very beginning? How was the word the light of men if there were no men? Adam wasn't created yet. Check that out. And the light shines. Listen about this. And the light shines in darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not. Hallelujah. And there was a man sent from God whose name was John. Okay. This was uh, Jesus' cousin. Okay. In the flesh, you know. Uh, Mary, who was Jesus' mother and the mother of John. They were related. Um, and the same came for witness to bear witness of the light. Oh, now the word is called the light because he is the light, because he is the light of men. And, all, and, and that all men through him might believe. Okay, he's still talking about John. He was not that light, talking about John the Baptist, but was sent to bear witness of that light. There was nobody else on this planet 
at that time that God could use to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. You see, John is the only man who was ever born, born with the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. That's what made John different from everybody. That's why he ate locusts and honey. That's why he did all the things that he did the way he lived the way he did, because he grew up with that. Uh, so anyway, so he's the only one who could point out the true, the real Jesus. I mean, you know how they say, you know, will the real, please stand up. He said, yeah, well, this is the real Jesus. This is the Messiah. This is it. This is him. There have been thousands of other people who have come into this world claiming to be the Redeemer and, and the Messiah. But this is it, ladies and gentlemen. Here he is right here and now. All right. This is John the Baptist. That, what, that which was a true light, uh, which lights every man comes into the world. This is him. He was, John was to bear witness to this, to point him out to the world. And he was in the world, and the world was made by him. Who? Okay, who? Who is this? Who did John point to? All right. Um, and the world was made by him. Now he's talking about a man, right? And the world knew him not. And he said, he came unto his own, and his own received him not. Whoa, whoa, whoa. The word became, I mean, the word is the light, and is the light of man. And here we are talking about John the Baptist. We're talking about Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. God sent, you know, Mary conceived the word. God sent the word part of himself into a woman's womb, and he became a man, and we know him as Jesus Christ. This is who John the Baptist is talking about. This is the word of God incarnate, amen, in the flesh. And he came into his own, which were the Hebrews, later called the uh, um, Israel, and, you know, never called them the Jews, uh, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, hallelujah, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Hallelujah. Even to them that believe only on his name. If you just believe on the name of Jesus, you can be saved. Hallelujah. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. The, the only gatekeeper, the only one with the only key to the only front door to heaven. That's Jesus Christ. Even, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word, verse 14, was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld, we saw, we witnessed his glory. The glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Verse 15, and John bore witness to him and cried, saying, this was he of whom I, sp I spoke said, he that comes after me is preferred before me because he was before me. Hallelujah. Talking about Jesus Christ. And of his fullness have, have all we received in grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Only Jesus Christ. This was God's plan from the very beginning. From the very beginning before he created Lucifer who became Satan. Okay, before God created any being, any angel, or anything who could be contaminated by the darkness. Because the darkness is evil. The darkness is what manipulates and tempts and seduces angels and people into turning away from God. Now, after God put the earth back together, he made a few changes. He created the sun and the moon. Well, guess what? All the rest of the universe has a sun and the moon. That's the time when God did it. Because it said before that, there was no sun and moon. God's glory lit, illuminated every planet. It's the word. It's the scripture. Amen? So it's only Jesus Christ. He came to do it. So the law was given by Moses. The law was a law. It's like the law of the land. This is what you do. And, it, and if you violate it, then this is the consequence, right? But grace and truth, mercy and truth came by Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. This was his mercy. He thought this from the very beginning. He already knew that God knew that he would be betrayed. So anyway, yeah, like I was going to say, so after the God made some changes, after he put the earth back together, right, he also put a place called hell inside the earth. And hell was created uh, for the imprisonment of not Lucifer or, or Satan and the angels, 
uh, who were cast out of heaven, but all the angels that would turn from God from that point forward until the end, they will be locked away and put in hell. You understand? That's why hell was originally created for disobedient angels. Okay, it wasn't for us. It wasn't for people. Anyway, um, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right, so that's enough for John chapter 1 for now. All right, so Jesus Christ lived a life as a man who lived in this world full of damaged goods. He has been in your shoes. Jesus has been in your shoes. He understands and knows your pain and your suffering. He has been in your shoes. He understands and knows your pain and suffering. You have an enemy. We have an enemy we know as Satan, the devil. He and his evil angels which we know are demons, are at war with all the humanity to inflict a struggle on us through our own minds. You understand? Guilt, shame, hurt, and pain are his favorite things. Now the truth, how does the truth free your mind? The truth is you are free. Hallelujah. Through Jesus Christ, you are set free. You call upon the name of the Lord, you will be saved. Hallelujah. That's the word. That's the truth. And there's nothing anybody can do to stop it. The darkness can comprehend not light. When the light comes through, whoo, the darkness has to split and move out the way. Huh? It can't contain God. God cannot be contained. It cannot stop his word. Hallelujah. God performs and executes exactly the way his word is spoken and the way it's written. Hallelujah. It's only through Jesus Christ. You understand that? Hallelujah. We have the victory through Jesus Christ. All you got to do is accept Jesus. Hallelujah, that's God's way. He's giving you a way that's unstoppable, unmistakable, unshakable. It can't be outlawed. It can't be removed. The law of the land cannot override the laws of God. Hallelujah. Can I get an amen to that? Law of the land, I don't care how many uh, laws that, that, that make evil lawful and make good illegal and unlawful, they, that God's law will always supersede. Amen. That's the truth. Jesus Christ is the truth. And when you accept Jesus Christ, the truth, he will set you free. He'll set you free from anything, anything. He set you free from all the damage that's been done in your mind. You understand? He'll set you free from it. Hallelujah. He will. He set liberty to the captives, right? You're captive. Until you accept Jesus Christ and allow him to free you of all the bondages of sin. Hallelujah. And all the damage that was done to you. Praise be to the Lord. God loves you. He loves you. He loves you. Why do you think the evil people of this world, right? All, you know, all of them. Why do you think they can't stand the name of Jesus, right? You can go anywhere in any country on this planet and you can talk about anybody else. You can talk about Buddha, Muhammad, Krishna. Um, you can talk about Zen. You can talk about yin yang. You can talk about anything you want. But when you mention Jesus Christ, they say no. No. Why is that? Because there's power in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. He's the truth. He went to the cross and he paid his life for you. Hallelujah. That's the truth. It's undeniable. The devil's got no power over that. That's why it's so important. They try to say, no, 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 please don't. Don't say the name Jesus. Please, not in this place. Even some churches. Even some churches. Go to church. No, 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 no. We talk about God. We talk about the Lord. Him. Him. They don't want to say his name. Him could be anybody. Can I get a witness? Him could be anybody. There's only one Jesus Christ. And he's the only way. Hallelujah. He's got the power, the authority. God gave, the Father gave Jesus all the authority and power in heaven and on the earth to rule this world, to make the changes and adjustments. Hallelujah. He can come through any situation, any time. He's looking for hearts. He's looking for the heart of men, the heart of people. God's looking for your heart where you submit, where you turn from your evil, wicked ways because they don't do you nothing. They bring destruction. They bring hurt and pain to yourself and other people. 
But when you turn from it and finally acknowledge, I can't do this on my own. What I've been doing is not working. Everything I've been taught, everything I've learned cannot set me free from the prison of my own mind. And from being in prison in ties with other evil people that you associate with. Only Jesus Christ can break the bonds and set you free. Hallelujah. Receive that. Believe that. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So Jesus Christ took all the sins of the world upon himself when he went to the cross. He gave up his life so that you may live, so that I may live, so all of us can live. Whosoever can live. Whoever calls upon Jesus. Hallelujah. Not upon some dead God like Baal. But on Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And uh, Jesus Christ rose from the dead on the third day in victory over the devil and over all the kingdom of darkness. As a man, God became a man. And only that way could God have a man to live a life free from sin. He didn't sin. He didn't fornicate, no adultery, didn't steal, didn't lie, covet, cheat, anything. That's why Jesus Christ was the only way. The only way. Hallelujah. So as a man, when he put, sacrificed himself and was nailed to the cross, death was standing there like, I can't do nothing with him. I can't do nothing with him. He never sinned. Because sin is what brought death into the world. Jesus Christ is a man never sinned. Death had no authority, had no victory over him. You understand that? Jesus had to give himself up to the Father. He said, Father, to you I commend my spirit. And then Jesus released his own spirit. So he gave his life, and he told the Father, please, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Because the Father is angry. The Father's crying. Look what they're doing to my son. Look what they're doing to my son. He's nothing but my love, the most love that I have for them. And they're nailing them to a cross. They spit on them. They punch them. They slap them. They whip them. This is what they do to my son. This is what God felt. Look what they do to him. And even the devil's laughing at Jesus' face. He said, get yourself down off that cross. You can easily call a legion of angels come over here and set you free off that cross. Huh? But he did it for you. He said, no, Father, no. Please forgive them. They do not what they do. You got to understand that people in your life that the devil used to inflict pain on you is of the devil. They do not what they do. They're just meat puppets. They're just instruments being led and guided by demons. Instructed by the devil. You understand? But that's why Jesus Christ did it. He rose in victory. Hallelujah! So that whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And after Jesus gave up his spirit to the Father, the Bible says he descended into the earth to hell. Because Adam changed masters. After Adam said he never repented of his sin according to the Bible. It does not say he repented of his sin. But instead, he made Satan his master, training the divine nature that God created with the nature to do good instead of evil for the nature of the devil, which is of the darkness, which is evil, to do evil. You understand? So Adam gave all the authorities that God gave him over the earth. Satan told Jesus in Luke, he said to Jesus, he said, if you will only bow to me, because he was pointing at the world, not at the planet, but the people. He said, all these were given to me. Who were they giving them to by? Not by God. Right? Adam gave it up. Get him. Adam made Satan his master as an angel and, and as, as, as a person, you know, Satan himself. Uh, he had the authority then. He had the authority over hell. You see? So Jesus went down to get that straight too. So he took back everything that uh, Satan had usurped from Adam and he took it back. Hallelujah. And he shut it down. Praise be to God. And he rose on the third day. And he stands at the right hand of the Father, interceding and praying for you and me on our behalf at all times. Hallelujah. Father, 
Help them make it through. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for that miracle. Thank you for the healing, Father, Lord. Please hear, hear Dennis's prayer. <laughs> Please hear my prayer. He prays for us. Hallelujah. He intercedes right now to the Father for us to bring you victory. Praise be to God. So that's why you call upon his name. He will give you victory. He will bring you salvation. He will set you free. He's got all authority. Hallelujah. Of heaven and earth. Victory over the devil, over sin, over anything in your life that's not right. Praise be to God. And that, my friend, is the message of the cross. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Our time is coming to a close. Father, just pray in the name of Jesus. Lord, everyone that's heard this message, Father, that you do your work with it, set them free. Hallelujah. So that they will accept Jesus Christ as your Lord, as, as their Lord and Savior. And they'll be saved in Jesus' name. God bless you.